What's going on YouTube? We're just about here in the garage today. I hope you guys are doing well. Um, in today's video, I'm going to be installing the uh, Leo Vince uh, three-quarter system on my 2022 Yamaha MT10. Uh, yeah, so just going to go over the process of how to uh, remove the old exhaust or the stock exhaust and put on the new exhaust. Um, and then uh, I'll give you a little, little, show you a little clip of the uh, exhaust that I got for it. I've already done an unboxing video for it, so if you want to check that video out, um, you can go uh, into the video below. I think it's the last video that I did. Um, and you'll find it on there if you want to see, a, see an unboxing of the exhaust. Um, yeah, so it'd be really great if uh, you guys would like and subscribe. Um, if you like my content, it really helps me out and inspires me, inspires me to make more content for you. And uh, with that being said, we'll uh, jump in over to the over onto the bike and I'll give you a quick little view of the exhaust and then uh, we'll get into the install. So uh, yeah, let's jump into it. Okay, so here's the, uh, the Leo Vint system that I got. Uh, this is the slip-on. Uh, I went with the uh, carbon fiber version that they have. Really nice quality uh, quality silencer, I think. And I think it's gonna look really awesome on the bike, being the bike's black. So that's why I went with the carbon fiber, trying to keep the bike as black as much as possible. Um, also, there's the link pipe. Uh, it's got a little bit of a resonator on it to uh, reduce the sound, uh, to make it less loud. So I don't want it to be too, too loud. So I think that might help out with it. And then obviously they give you some instructions and stuff, but that uh, the instructions only seem to work for the, uh, when you're using it as a slip on. So I don't see any instructions on how to install that, uh, the link pipe, but I mean, I'm sure we can figure it out. It's pretty much just going in place of the uh, stock exhaust. So. Um, they give you a bag of all the different uh, brackets and hangers and stuff that you need and springs and then uh, yeah so looks like everything we need is there. I give you a little uh, pulling tool for the uh, give you a little pulling tool for the uh, the springs to, and uh, yeah so let's just jump over onto the bike and take a look at what we all have to remove. So all right, well this is going to be a little bit of a project, but I mean it's definitely worth it for the sound so and the weight savings that I'm going to get on it. Um, yeah so. There's definitely a few things that we need to take off. Um, obviously, first thing maybe I guess is probably to take off the uh, stock silencer. Uh, the screw is right here. Um, and then there's another screw down here that needs to come off. We have to get this heat shield off. There's three screws on it. There's one right here, one right here, and one right here. Um, so that definitely has to come off. Uh, there's the X up valve. It also needs to be taken out. Um, and that's hitting or that that'll come off with the stock exhaust But we got to get the cables off of there so we can actually drop the stock exhaust down um, There's the hanger for the exhaust right there and I'm not hundred percent sure But I think there might be another one on the other side or it's just a little bit lower down here So yeah down in here is another another hanger that we have to get taken off um, We have to get the O2 sensor out um, There's one right here and there's also one on the other side and obviously we have to take off the brackets. So um, with the O2 sensor, it's a little trick you can do. You can just count how many turns it took uh, for it to come out. And then when you go to put it back in, you turn it in the opposite direction and you can screw it back in and then the cable should be nice and uh, uh, not have any resistance on it. Um, the other option is too, is you can follow it up and find where they connect. Uh, they're up, up in here somewhere or under the seat. I'm not hundred percent sure. Um, but that's also another option is that you can fully just re disconnect the O2 sensor and then take the cable off so you don't have any risk of damaging it. I'm just going to do the little twist method. Um, I've done it before and it seems to work. Um, yeah, so that's basically, uh, that's it for down here. Um, obviously up under the seat and I just realized I didn't take the seat off and maybe I'll just stop for a quick second and we'll jump back over to that. Um, but we have to remove the, uh, remove the, uh, cables up here for the, um, for the exit valve as well. All right, I got the seat taken off and now I can show you the servo motor, uh, the servo motor for the valve. Uh, the servo cables are connected onto the side here. So we're just gonna pop this guy out and we're gonna take the cables off of the servo motor. Um, with the tuning on this bike uh, that I've been reading and following along with is that uh, you actually have to keep the servo motor plugged in and you also have to keep the O2 sensors plugged in and the AIS system plugged in. So you have to keep the servos in place else you'll lose your cruise control. So that's one of the one of the main things to remember is that if you are getting it tuned that those things have to remain plugged in. I don't know if a servo buddy um, for those connectors 
will solve the issue. Um, I haven't read anything about that yet, but just keeping them in place. Um, you can have them deactivated, but they have to be still connected um, onto the on the wiry harness, else the uh, the cruise control on the bike seems to not work. So, Yamaha has done a really good job with their new emission stuff, and they're trying to make it as difficult as possible. It seems so. Yeah, just one thing to note that these will have to remain plugged in um, if you want your cruise control to work. So that's your servo for your uh, exhaust valve, your O2 sensors, and your AIS system uh, has to be remain plugged in. So yeah, um, I'm just gonna get a bunch of tools ready, and I'll just go over the tools. Um, that we're going to need to remove the exhaust and then uh, we'll go over and start removing everything. Um, yeah, so so the tools that I found so far that you're going to need uh, for the exhaust clamps, uh, you're going to need a 10 mil, 10 mil socket. Um, for the O2 sensor, it looks like it's going to be a 17 mil. Um, for these little brackets, for the heat shield, it is a number four hex that you're going to need for all three of these bolts um, the uh, clamp for the stock silencer that connects to the exhaust pipe it's a number five hex and for the um, and for the uh, exhaust hangers um, it's a number six so uh, there's one two three and i think there's four there's one on the other side as well I'm um, definitely going to need an extension bar as well, or an extension, a uh, socket extension, and a, uh, I'm going to use a 3 8 uh, wrench, uh, ratchet, and uh, yeah, the other thing I have here is for when I put the exhaust back on, I'm just going to use a little bit of uh, silicone grease um, to help everything slide back on easier. Yeah, so we'll just jump over and get the uh, start removing everything. I'm gonna I'm gonna start with removing the this to the exhaust. As I said, it's a bolt here or a nut here, and then there's a hanger as well there. And to get the dust shield off or the heat shield, I would should say, um, it's three three bolts right here. And we'll get all that taken apart. We'll get the uh, we'll get the valve taken apart too, and then uh, we'll go somewhere from there. I'm just gonna do a quick time lapse of that. I'm not gonna show you actually working on it so I'll just set up a time lapse. I just want to show you before I do the time lapse and start working on it what needs to be removed, right? It'll bore you with a really long video if I show you every single twist of the wrench. So yeah, so I'm just gonna jump onto that and start doing that and then there'll be a quick little time lapse of that and then I'll jump per section per section what I'm gonna be taking off and explain it. Okay, well, we got the uh, silencer and the heat shield off, and now it's time to get this uh, X-up valve, or what, however you pronounce it, off. Um, so, it looks like to get it off, it's just got these, uh, it's just connected to this bracket right here, and then it connects to this little wheel here. Um, so what we need to do is uh, loosen these guys off and loosen off the nut on this side, and then that will be able to uh, pull out, and then we can pull the, uh, Pull the cables off. Um, uh, that was probably really bad focus there. For some reason, it likes to focus on my hand. Anyway, so we're going to take these guys off, loosen them off, and then pull them off of the wheel that they can ride on. Um, I would maybe suggest taking a picture of this uh, if you ever decide to put the stock exhaust back on. I don't know why you would. Maybe if you're selling it and want to keep your exhaust for a newer version of the bike you bought or something. I don't know. But uh, anyway, maybe take a picture of this guy uh because a year and two years down the road you're like oh how's that go back together i don't know so picture would definitely help with that um yeah so i'm just going to take a quick picture of that so i have something to remember it on and uh i'll work on getting this guy off next uh yeah as i said i think it's just loosen these guys off and then they just ride along the the channels here and then they pop out so if i run into any issues i'll jump back over onto the camera but other than that it's going to be another little quick time lapse All right, so we've got these uh, cables all loosened off now. Um, so the, now we can move over to, uh, we're gonna take the uh, O2 sensors out on both sides. There's one here and then there's one on the other side. It's hanging just, just about right there, identical to this side. Um, so we'll get that, get that guy taken off, those two taken off. And then I'm also gonna take off the brackets here, uh, get these clamps off, and then uh, I'll move to uh, dropping off the, uh, this big ugly thing.
All right, so we got the uh, got the O2 sensors disconnected. Um, I would actually probably recommend that you uh, remove them from up in the harness, maybe. Uh, this one, it seems to be like the connector is just up and underneath the, underneath here. Uh, I mean, it's probably easier said than done to get that out, but it just it doesn't feel really good twisting these uh, as much as I just did, especially on the other side because there's not as much slack on the cable. Um, yeah, so that might be something you want to do. If, you, if you're okay and feel like you can trust it, then go ahead. Just kind of looking at these and they're really white. Um, I'm just wondering if uh, that's an indication of how lean the bike's actually running from the factory and how lean the bike actually might go when I, uh, when I put the exhaust on it. It's probably going to run like crap, but luckily I, with my collarbone being broken um, or after surgery and everything and healing up now, I guess I should say, um, I won't be doing much riding on it this season, so we'll see how it goes, how it runs without the, uh, without a tune on it at first, but I'm sure it's not going to be very good. Um, so yeah, got the, uh, got the brackets done and there's another one on the other side. There's two of these brackets. There's two O2 sensors. got those done. So next I'm just going to take off the, uh, the exhaust hangers. Um, by the looks of things, there is, uh, one here. Um, there's one down here, right in there. You can see it there. And then just on the other side, a little bit more over there, there's also one. So it's, uh, I thought I seen one before too. Um, no, I guess it's actually just the three. So yeah, so one, two, and then the third one's over on the other side. So you'll be able to see where the hanger is. I'm not going to show you it, but I'll just, uh, we'll get the exhaust off and, uh, we'll wiggle it, wiggle it back. And, uh, that's how you get off the stock exhaust system. Uh, we're obviously going to keep the headers on because it's a three quarter system. So we don't have to worry about that. That's a whole different ball game, putting new headers on. So, um, I like the color that they've come in anyway. So and both systems are stainless, so it should look really good together, I think. All right, so I got all the little bolts, uh, the bolts removed that are on the hangers holding the exhaust on and got it all nice and loose now. Uh, one little trick that I like to do um, so that it doesn't drop when I take the bolts out is I'd like to just put a little bit of pressure with my foot underneath and then that way it just doesn't fall to the ground. Um, I can probably move my foot and it holds there pretty well like just over here hanging off the pipes but it just just in case it just likes to pop off but it's nice and loose and looks like it should just uh, slip backwards now. So yeah that's just one thing a little little trick I do just so that I put my foot underneath there just so it doesn't uh, it doesn't uh, come on or like drop onto the ground because you might you don't want to dent this or scratch it so we're just going to wiggle this guy out um, and get it off all right well i'm having a little bit of an issue pulling it back all the way um there's a little bit of a steel bracket right here that has like uh different cables running the cables for the uh, for the valve running through it. Um, so it's this guy right here and it seems to be uh, stopping this bracket from being able to slide back far enough. So I think what I'm going to do is I have to take it off anyway. I'm just going to take these two little guys off here. It looks like it's a five mil or uh, not a five mil, a uh, five, number five hex. So we'll just get that guy removed as well. And uh, hopefully that gives us the clearance that we need to be able to uh, remove this. All right, well, we got the, uh, got the exhaust off. As I said, there was a little bit of a bracket that's right here that was causing an issue. Um, it holds the, the cables for the servo uh, and the, uh, the valve on the stock exhaust, so it's gotta come off anyway. Um, and now we'll be able to pull that, pull that back through and pull the cables down once we get to that part of it. Um, it's probably actually the next part to do is actually remove the, uh, remove the cables out of the bike and out of the, uh, the servo up top. Um, there's a bracket down here. You could probably choose to keep that in there or, or um, this guy right here. Where's the focus? Yeah, so this guy right here, you could probably remove that as well. Uh, just connected to the bottom of the frame. And then there's another the other bracket over on the other side, which is just right here. You could probably take that off. It'll look cleaner without one of them on there. And I mean, might as well keep them in good shape and not get them full of dirt and whatnot. So that might be a good idea. And uh, yeah, so. Yeah, it came off pretty easy. It wasn't too hard of a task. Um, I mean, it's it's pretty heavy. I'm not supposed to be lifting heavy things right now, so uh, uh, I will get the uh, the weight of that, and then I'll get the weight of the uh, the new exhaust. Um, yeah, so 
I'm gonna need a little bit of help probably getting this all back together. Just like doing this all one-handed and with a broken or uh, uh, post-surgery, you know, I'm not really supposed to be doing this kind of work on the bike anyway, but yeah, it's coming along. Um, wasn't too difficult to get off. If you got both your hands, it'll be a lot simpler for you for sure. Um, yeah, so next we're just gonna get into, uh, get into the servo up here. Um, I'm gonna have to go get a tripod or something to, to hold the camera so I can work on this, but we're gonna get the cables removed out of this and then get them, uh, they run down along the frame along here, I believe. Yeah, so we're gonna get them taken out and then we'll just put the servo back in place where it's sitting currently and uh, yeah, so we'll pull the cables out and go from there. After we get those out, then uh, we'll put the, uh, the new exhaust system back or the, the three quarter part on, the link pipe and uh, the silencer. All right, well, let's get this, uh, I get these cables removed out of this guy. Uh, it seems like it's just held down by this little uh, this rubber rubber bracket thing here. So we're gonna get that guy taken out first. Um, there's just two little clips on each side of it that are holding it down. So just take that and pull it underneath and pop it back up. And then this little guy should just uh, wiggle its way out. All right, so. Looks like what we want to do here is we want to, uh, we're going to take this cover off right here um, so we can gain access to the, to the wheel that has the, uh, the cables attached to it. Um, by the looks of things, it's just a Phillips screwdriver. So there's another tool we need, a Phillips screwdriver. Yeah, so we'll just get that guy um, taken off and then uh, hopefully it's not too hard uh, routing the cables back through the bike. Uh, I think it's going to be a little bit of a pain in the ass, but we'll find out. All right, sorry about that. The grass company just came by and uh, they missed the backyard. Anyway, yeah, so these guys are right here. Um, yet again, I probably would suggest to maybe take a picture of all this and find out what cable goes where, um, just because uh, one of these cables has a black uh, nut on the bottom and the other one has the silver uh, steel one. Um, they're both steel, but one's black and one's silver colored. Um, and I would probably maybe recommend uh, giving a little tug and seeing which one's which. Um, by the looks of things, um, the one closest to this little bump out here is the black one. And then this is the silver one. So that's the only thing you have to remember. Um, it's probably never going back together, but uh, I'm going to just take a quick picture of it. And then that way we can uh, remember if I ever have to put the bike back together or whatever. So back to stock which is probably never going to happen but okay so as I was saying this one this one right here is uh, for the has a black uh, nut on it at the bit uh, where the valve was so I'm just gonna take that guy off there and then same thing with this one I'm gonna try and get oh they make it really difficult to uh, to do that so you just got to give it a little bit of a turn and then Pull that guy out there too. It's little little things are easier to get out sometimes than other days. All right, so there's that. And then to get it out of the servo, uh, it's looking like you just give it a, a little tug <laughs> like that. And then there we go. So there's the cables removed. So we got those guys taken out right there. Um, as I said, I'm going to keep the servo the servo motor in here. So we'll just put the uh, We'll put the cover back on it um, that way it stays nice and clean in there don't want any dirt getting in there we'll put that back together quick here so i got those back on and we'll just take this guy and rest it back in its home and then uh we'll take this uh rubber guy and put it back underneath and there we go so that's just going to stay in there it's the bike's going to believe that it's doing something and it's not actually doing anything anymore because these are disconnected all right so the next order of operations is trying to figure out how to route these guys down through the frame um looks like it goes underneath the battery right here and uh where it goes from there i don't know so i'll have to figure that one out so it looks like the cables, they run down, down the side of the frame underneath of uh, this plastic tray, kind of like right here. And then they pop out right here. And then just behind the rear brake reservoir, there's, there they are there. So 
I'm thinking that we'll just pull them down to this point. And then uh, once we get it pulled down to this point, we'll pull them back down that way or we'll pull that end of the cable up. Uh, not too sure what's going to be the best to do, but uh, yeah, that's all right. So I got the cables out. Um, it actually wasn't as hard as I thought. All I had to do was uh, pull the cables down here from down from the bottom and then just help squeeze them through a little bit of a groove that's right here and then you just pull them out from the bottom it wasn't it wasn't difficult at all so um yeah so got the cables out and uh so now it is time to install the new exhaust um i mean as simple as it sounds it's pretty much just you know take the uh take the exhaust and match it up with the hangers that are there um and then uh put on the clamps um i'm gonna put some silicone grease on here uh, so that everything on the on the stock pipe there so that everything slides on a little bit of a e little bit easier and then uh, just match up where the brackets go um, earlier i was saying that you might want to take off this this bracket down here uh, no you definitely don't want to do that because you need that one to hang the uh, the link pipe onto and then it's looking like the other one that you need for the link pipe not 100 percent sure where it is just yet um, maybe it was the one that was right here uh, I'm not too sure, so I might have to put that guy back on, the one that was right here. Uh, but we'll get into that when we start putting the exhaust on. So yeah, definitely don't take this guy off. You need that. Um, that's going to that's gonna be needed. And if you got some silicone grease from another exhaust company, put that on there. And then just it's going to be using the hardware that came with the exhaust from Leo Vince. All right, so here's a bag of uh, hardware that they gave us. Um, this looks like it's the, the hardware to put on the exhaust, uh, on the hangers. Um, there's a bunch of different other things that I haven't got into yet. Um, I think the first step, obviously I said before, is I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, silicone grease uh, around the, or just exhaust sealant or whatever it's called. It's just stuff that came with my girlfriend's race, race fit exhaust. Um, it's a silicone sealer it's called, I guess. Um, just some clear stuff that goes on there. It probably burns off after you, you know, start it the first time anyway. It just helps everything kind of slide together. Um, for this guy right here, um, we're going to want to put these. So they have these brackets right here. Um, we're going to want to put those on there onto the end of the, um, the, the link pipe here. Um, so you're putting it on there. I would recommend putting the, uh, the hex uh, head outward and down or whatever just so you can reach it with a, a pair of um with your tools um and it's a number five hex uh on there so i'm just going to put those guys on the outside of this first get them slid on there and i'm going to do the same thing with the other one make sure that the orientation is the way that i want it facing outward and then uh next i'm going to put that silicone grease on like i said i was going to All right, so looking at the instructions, uh, the hardware that comes with it, you're going to want a nut on one side, you're going to want a bigger washer, and also uh, the longer one of these that comes with the hardware. Um, that's going to be for the bracket that's underneath of the bike. So we're just going to slide the exhaust on, and then uh, hopefully it wasn't, yeah, so this is the, the hardware that you're going to use for that. So we'll just start getting that guy in there. Um, So the first trick is just to get these exhaust pipes on, or the link pipe on, I should say. So it's going to be a huh. just give it a little bit of a wiggle. Seems to be going on there really nicely, actually. Just want to keep wiggling that back until it's until it's good. You want to line the the hole up for the the link pipe with the uh, with the bracket that's under here, obviously, because you won't be able to get your, uh, your screws through there or your nut. You guys want some ice cream? There's an ice cream truck driving by. And also at the same time, we don't want to tighten all this stuff up completely yet. We just want to put it there so we still have some play and we can move everything around a little bit, right? So just we're walking everything up and we don't want to make everything perfectly tight just yet. And then once we're done, we'll go back through and we'll, we'll tighten everything down completely. 
Uh, I got this side on. Uh, we'll get the, those tightened down afterwards. The clamps that go around the exhaust over here. And then now we just have to work on the, the bracket back here. I'm not 100% sure how that goes all, all goes on yet. So we're gonna figure that out quickly here. I think I gotta take this bracket off, I'm not too sure. The instructions aren't very clear on this, so that's why it's kinda good that I'm able to make a video. And So I'm just gonna jump off camera here and figure this out, and then I'll jump back onto the camera after I got it sorted out. But I mean, we just got her mock, mocked up right now and it's already starting to look really good. So I'm excited to see what this looks like finished. All right, well, I got this uh, all sorted out here now. Um, so what you're gonna have to do uh, for the brackets that connect here. Um, this guy right here uh, needs to come off. Uh, so there's two there's two nuts or two bolts holding it on here. Um, one is a, a three, oh, hold on a second here. Yeah, one is a number five and the other one is a number four hex. So that's the number four and that's the number five. So you wanna take this guy off here um, and then they provide you with this uh, steel bracket right here. Um, so what's gonna happen is this is going to sit behind here and behind there and it's going to connect right there um, they give you there's uh three different size bolts that you have there's a longer one the longest one goes down there uh that for this bracket right here there's a middle sized one which is for this connection right here for that steel bracket that i showed you there um, so you want to put that on there and then the shortest one, you're gonna use this little fancy flange thing or whatever it is, a decorative uh, washer or whatever. Um, and then that's gonna go right here. Um, so the other thing to note for the uh, silencer itself is that they have, um, just like that, they have the, like the, it's not really a compression fit, but it's, uh, it's got those slits in it so that you can slide it on a little bit easier. And just like you did down here at the bottom, you're going to add in one of these, uh, these, uh, um, one of these, right? Not sure what it's called. Uh, clamp. There we go. You're going to put a clamp on, on the exhaust like that. So what you want to do is you're definitely going to want to get that guy on there first and then slide it on afterwards, right? So. All right, so now we got the uh, the bracket installed here. Uh, that's what it should look like. Um, I'm gonna go through and give everything a tightening down after I'm all done. Uh, just everything was loose so I could all mock it, mock it up on the bike and make sure that everything fit properly. Um, so we'll get that done. Um, so as I was saying for the, for the silencer, uh, it's got this here and you just need to uh, use that uh, clamp that they've given you. So you want to slide the clamp on there, slide the exhaust on, slide the clamp back over, and then everything's going to fit. Um, and then you'll tighten everything up and get it sitting the way that you want. So we'll just get this guy slid on right here like this. Um, you want the uh, nut to be facing the proper way out. And then we're going to take this and we're going to slide it on here like so. This one goes on pretty easy, so I don't think you need to put any uh, silicone grease or anything on there. Um, and then we'll just slide that back guy back up like that. Um, you want, it's looking like you want to do something like that, um, just because you have to get that spring that goes from here to here. Um, they give you a black, a black spring, just one second if I can find it quickly, just down here. Uh, yeah, so they give you this, uh, this little black spring right here. Uh, you just stretch it between these two clamps and then you tighten this guy down and that should hold your silencer on there all nice and tight. Um, so yeah, we'll just get that guy done and then we'll move over to getting the everything all tightened up on the, on the exhaust everywhere. And then um, we'll put in the O2 sensors and after that we're pretty much done. Okay, so now I've got the uh, silencer all nice and tight on there with the clamp here and the spring down there. It's nice that they provide this uh, this little uh, hook tool for you. It makes it a lot easier to pull the pull the springs in between. So good on them for that. That's cool. Um, so yeah, the next part is is I'm just gonna go and I'm gonna start tightening down all the three the three different connections that I've made. 
uh, with the bracket and on the hangers there. So uh, for the nut on the back, it is a 13 mil wrench. And then for the, uh, for the hex key that you need, you need a number six. So I'm just gonna go around and give those a tighten and then we'll work on getting those uh, O2 sensors back in. Alrighty, well, we got everything all tightened down now. Uh, nice and secure, everything looks good. Mufflers or the silencer is not moving whatsoever. Uh, the pipes aren't moving whatsoever. Everything is nice and tight, so that's good. Um, so I'm gonna get this, this O2 sensor back in. I'm not gonna show you the other side. I'll just show you this side just because it'll be the same process on the other side. Um, so obviously when you're screwing it in, you're gonna be turning it one direction, right? So what you do is just turn it in the opposite direction. Um, I'm thinking roughly 10 or 12 rotations uh, will be good because that seems to be roughly what it did, what it was to take it out. Um, and in that way, when you put it back in, there's uh, no strain on the wires. So I'm just going to get that done quickly here and then uh, I'll jump over to the other side uh, and uh, we'll, we'll uh, get, the, get the exhaust pipe all cleaned up as well. Um, so I'm going to go over the whole pipe with... Um, with some uh, brake cleaner and find something to clean the carbon off with and then we're going to get all the fingerprints off of it and that way when it heats up the fingerprints don't get etched into the steel and yeah so as i said turn this the opposite way what way it's going in roughly 10 or 12 turns and then uh and then we will do that on both sides Well, we got the exhaust all installed now. We got the O2 sensors back in. All the nuts and bolts and clamps are tight now. Um, so I guess that leaves only one thing to do, is to start it and see how this thing sounds. Um, yeah, so it was a pretty uh, pretty easy install. Um, I mean, if you have both your arms and are, you're just uh, haven't had a solder, uh, collarbone surgery, you might be able to actually do it a little bit quicker than I was able to do it, but all in all, it wasn't too bad of an install. Um, all the hardware that I needed for the uh, for the parts were there. Um, yeah, so shout out to Leo Vince. I think it looks really awesome on the bike. Um, you know, it's the carbon fiber really really looks good with the rest of the aesthetic of the bike for sure. And we'll have to see how this all looks when it burns in. Um, obviously, my headers are burned in a little bit more than the the new exhaust, but hopefully they. Uh, catch up soon um yeah so all in all really good uh really good thing the fitment was uh pretty much perfect in my opinion um didn't have to screw around with anything like that so um the only thing i did notice if you're actually going to be using the slip on you might have to drill these holes out um this is for when you're just using the slip on with the stock exhaust um, but other than that um, not required on this one so yeah i guess uh the only thing left here to do is to put the seat back on it i got the exhaust all cleaned up and I used, uh, used some water and some brake clean and yeah so I got a screaming kid behind me walking down the street so that's good for the good for my audio anyway so yeah um, we'll just uh, maybe do a quick little clip of what it sounds like and uh, I didn't get a clip of the stock exhaust unfortunately so I was going to do a comparison video and I forgot to do the uh, the stock sound but I'm not going to put the exhaust exhaust back on for that so yeah so we'll just do a quick little clip here of what she sounds like and uh yeah so i hope uh hope the video was informative for you and uh, if you have any questions uh feel free to uh feel free there's a bee after me again every year when i'm making videos around this time of year i get talked by the bees um <laughs> uh yeah so like i was saying if you have any questions um uh, feel free to leave a comment down and i'll try and answer to the best of my ability for you so that's uh that's pretty much how you install the exhaust and um, I'll do a quick little sound clip here.
All right, well, we got the exhaust all on the bike. Um, it sounds really awesome. I'm really impressed with it. It's not too loud. It's got a nice, nice tone to it. So I'm really impressed with the exhaust. I'm, I'm really glad with the purchase. Uh, I can't wait to be able to get out on the street and actually ride it. Maybe I can convince the girlfriend to let me take it for a little ride around the block. I don't know. With uh, just having surgery, she's not going to be really happy with that, I don't think. But we'll try it. Um, yeah, so I hope you liked the video and I hope it was informative for you. Uh, like and subscribe if you like my content. It really helps me out and inspires me to make more. Uh, videos for you guys. Um, if you enjoyed, if, if you have any uh, questions about this uh, install for this exhaust system, uh, please leave a comment down down below and I will uh, answer to the best of my ability for you. Um, there'll be a future video and a subscribe link somewhere above my head. I don't know where it is, but anyway, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Peace out.